Hello, everyone. Welcome to hey. everyone's favorite live stream. Monday and, afternoon and by, live stream. By everyone, I mean our mother's, mother's favorite live stream. And some random person that <laughs> happens to log in. Yes. Yes. Thank y'all for joining us. Hope y'all are doing well. Yeah, we hope everyone is yeah. doing well. Good weekend. Yeah, big weekend for, for a lot of folks. Father's Day yep. happened. Yeah. yeah. And came, came, came and gone. Came and gone. Yeah, yeah. My wife and I celebrated our 22nd anniversary. That's right, yeah. 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 So, so uh, it was a so good weekend. Dave had big plans for his anniversary. but Big he plans. Canceled them because uh, a mini hurricane was coming out of the Gulf. We were we were all going to drown <laughs> in an apocalypse of torrential rain. And it was bright and sunny the whole day. We didn't get a drop. Not a drop of rain on Saturday. Yep. It was my rain. My rain gauge was bone yeah. dry. Yeah, yeah. Because my daughter was going to watch your girls while yep. y'all went on a date. A date. Like, we, we go out for our anniversary every year. The reason why this one was particularly special was because our anniversary actually fell on Saturday. On Saturday, yeah. So it meant we got to go out on our anniversary, mm -hmm. which, you know, only happens every like, seven years. Seven years. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, we, we uh, did. We had plans and no good weather men. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We'll blame them. Gotta blame somebody. That's the yeah, way it works yeah. these days. Well, look, hey, yeah. I mean, if you're a weatherman, you only got to be right about 25 percent of the time, and yeah. you can get paid a lot of money to do it. So that's right. Yeah, so for so. those for those of you that are not accurate in any of your predictions in life, go study meteorology, and you can get a career. You can have a career. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, they were certain you it can, was going to hit can, us. Right. You can be you can be less than even money. Yeah. And have <laughs> and have and have a good career yeah, you, you could be a, a professional baseball player you only get it right three out of ten times and you can well, go to the hall of fame the, who is the the ball player um i think he's he's right now like he's got the worst batting average in the entire league mm -hmm. but he's like top 10 in on base percentage yeah. because the dude walks he walks all the time yeah all the yeah. time yeah yeah so yeah. the guy can't the guy can't hit a he ball. He can't hit it, but he can get on base. But he can get on base. So, and really, that's yeah. the that's the point, right? Yeah, it doesn't matter you how you get on base. base. Yeah, they're like, there's the guy that's been hit the most times with the baseball. He gets on base too, you know. Yeah, right. it does, exactly I don't care how you get there; just get there and score <laughs> yeah. runs. Yeah. right. <laughs> now he's not going to go to Hall of Fame for the most walks. No, Hall of Famers no. go because they hit the ball, right? They hit the ball. But the best Hall, some of the best players that ever played the game. Hit hit the ball three point two times out of ten. Right. Yeah. For uh, their careers. Yeah. If you if you are in that three hundred, like above three fifty, yeah. mm -hmm. you're having a phenomenal yeah. season. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And if you happen to be one of these jokers that like crosses over into the four hundred. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, there's only a couple of those. Ever. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. just like, oh my goodness, yeah. this guy but is what, hitting everything. What in life can you be right thirty five percent of the time and get paid millions of dollars to do it? <laughs> right. I mean, come Not on. much. Yeah. Not a so, whole. Be, Lots. Baseball players and meteorologists, they got it made. They got it made. Yeah. All right. We got something for you. Oh, yeah. Year, folks. Another visit. More Funko Pop has, 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 has come. It's slowly trickling in. Yeah. We have Jerry, George Newman. Uh, Mike the Tiger doesn't feature on any Seinfeld episode. He was here first. He was here first because uh, LSU, go mm -hmm. Tigers. Uh, but Elaine Bennis Elaine has Bennis. arrived. There she is. Uh, and so Funko Pop is like one of those boring unboxings there is, but we're doing it. Is that the dress that she wore for the Chinese restaurant commercial? I mean, uh, ep commercial. episode. That the, the red, let's, the, let's red, look, red dress. Let's look it up because I don't know, man. She's she's got a, a cup. She's got a cup in her hand. She's wearing yeah. glasses. Yeah. Usually this was like a like a work type a work deal. situation. I'm trying like, to remember was that. This, was this a Mr. Pitts? Maybe so. Maybe she's working for Mr. Pitt. I can't remember. Yeah. Because she didn't wear glasses a lot. I'm not getting out of my chair, by the way, folks. That's I care I care somewhat, but not that much. Not that much, yeah. All right. So, so there's Elaine. Join the crew. So who's left? But Kramer. Kramer. Of, of course. Yeah. Of course it's last, Kramer. Last one in the door. Last one in the door is gonna be Kramer. It's funny how they all have glasses. Look at there. Yeah, yeah. So, Interesting. so yeah. George, of course, has them. Newman, of course, has them. Elaine wore them occasionally, occasionally, yeah. but in that one, she uh, she has the glasses, the sandals with the white socks. That was classic nineties. Yes. Yeah, yes. Only the coolest kids wore those. Yeah. So we're waiting on Kramer to come in in the door. Crazy man. Yeah. They won't have the whole deal. Oh, by the way. So also, um, I haven't told you this yet, but 
all but one piece of the the, the apartment the apartment set has come in. Oh, what? It's I'm waiting on the Jerry section. Okay. The Jerry section is like the window. Yeah. Back there, you know, where they try to install the uh, the AC, AC. <laughs> and we're laying through George's toupee. Yeah. Like, I hate this thing. Like, it's that <laughs> section. And so the thing is, I pre-ordered that one just to ensure I got the 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 sale price because once these things hit, they start going up in prices. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, you couldn't pre-order anything else at the time, so I went on Funko's website and got set up for email notifications yeah. when the rest of them would come available. Well, they all came available at the exact same time. So I get individual notifications for all of them. I what? order them. Okay. Yeah, it locks me into the initial price, okay. which is not, you know, not too bad. And so Funko ships them all. I get this huge box from Funko like a week later. No way. With all of them but Jerry because huh. I pre-ordered Jerry. And I don't, and Jerry doesn't come in towards until like the end of the month. Oh, wow. Okay. Because I ordered them from a, through a vendor on Amazon. Yeah. So I, I almost canceled that and just got the Jerry anyway. But I was like, no, I'll just wait. So I've got huh. like on my end table right now is the full apartment. Yeah. Minus that one section. Interesting. And look, it's awesome. I mean, it's, it's the whole apartment. Yeah. I mean, it's the kitchen. The, the living room area yeah. with, with the couch and the chair uh-huh. and the little coffee table. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's got bathroom, the bedroom, ba- yeah. bathroom. Because you never see the bedroom. So that's true. That's true. A, yeah, but yeah. You, but yeah, you see the hallway, and that section uh, came with Uncle Leo, <laughs> a little Uncle Leo minifigure. Jerry, hello. Yeah. So you've got the full cast, including Norman. Uh, yeah, Norman Newman or Norman Newman and Uncle Leo. Those are the two okay. that makes that rounds out the all the thing. sections. Yeah, so each section comes with a little figure. Awesome, man! It looks amazing. You got it. It looks amazing. You I can't. Got I gotta find a place in my office for it. Once, once uh, Jerry comes in, it looks sweet. I bet it is. Yep. So Seinfeld anyway. fans, anyway. Yeah. Not that anyone's interested in this, but us. But who cares? This is our podcast. We <laughs> yeah, this we, exactly we do we right. <laughs> We're the ones mashing the buttons, and <laughs> you're the one watching. So, um, anyway. So we do actually have an episode today. We're not going to sit here and chit chat, even though we have talked about yeah. how this could just be an amazing podcast. It would be. Um, it would very much be. We do have an episode. We are continuing on our series on identity and sexuality. Mm-hmm. And so last week we did this uh, introduction, just sort of lay some groundwork. Yep. And so this week we're gonna we're gonna get into. Um, I, th- I thought of two titles. I originally had titled this "Ideas Have Consequences." Yeah, that's good. That there's was my a, original. A book about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my original title for this. And then I thought, um, just to be for a more fun title that still kind of stuck with that theme, we're calling it "All Hail King Self." All Hail King Self, right? <laughs> because these are we're going to talk about ideas and philosophies. That's fantastic. That basically led to this overglorification yeah. of self. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So we we kind of got into that. Like this is where we are mm-hmm. last week. Now we're going to talk about how did we really get to that point? Yeah, yeah. we're going to un- we're going to unravel it. Mm-hmm. And I've, something I've noticed yeah. is in our culture, there's so many references to self that we have in our common language. We don't even notice right. self revelation, self actualization, self motivation, self help, self help. Self righteous, <laughs> self sanctimony. I mean, yeah, like, it's a lot there's, of self. It's all these self a words. Bunch of self going and so, on. Uh, we I don't even notice it. It's like it snuck in. Like, it just came, became yeah. part of our common vernacular. And I think it shows a little bit about kind of, kind of where, where, where we are as a society. So, so true. Yep. That is true. All right. So now we're ready to actually roll on. All hell, King Self. Here we go. This is David Rhymes, and you're listening to Foot Notable, a podcast where we discover. The truth is in the details. Welcome back. What should we call our fans? Our fans probably need a name. Uh, the Foot Footnotes. Notable Nation. Foot Notable Nation. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> whoever, whoever you are. Whoever you, you are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Once again, we've got another wonderful episode in store for you today as we continue our conversation from last week in our series on identity and sexuality. Mm -hmm. This has been a big topic. Yeah, huge. Like it is a big topic anyway, but just the conversation that's been having around this as we've talked about it here on the podcast, but also with our church, Mm -hmm. it's a, it's a really got a lot of, um, engagement yeah people are talking about it people yeah. are thinking about it it's part of the conversation um some would say that the church needs to keep its nose out of the business of these types of things uh, because some would it, say that some some would say that uh unfortunately the bible says a lot about these matters uh maybe not the exact words like transgenderism but the bible does have a lot to say about sexual ethics um, yes and and so we have something to say about it to those who follow christ and even to those who maybe don't, we want to have a conversation about it for sure. And so uh, we have a lot of parents and grandparents that are that are uh, fielding questions from their own children and grandchildren these days. Very much so. About, about what their kids are coming home from school with and what they're maybe seeing on television and reading about on the Internet. And so as Christians, we need to at least equip our children to think through these issues um, and, and quite, quite honestly, to give them the, the, the accurate biblical answers yeah. before they get their answers from someone else. Very much so. And so it's a very relevant issue. Yes, in the church it today. is. So if you're, if you're jumping in on this conversation, um, you can definitely start a series here, Yeah. but I think you're going to get uh, some good background if you back up one episode. Mm-hmm. Um, but today is really kind of a, very much a standalone episode, even though we're going to go back in time, Orin. Yep. We're going to get in our way back machine, the way back machine, and um, we're going to go back and talk about how did we actually get here? Yeah, we introduced where we are mm-hmm. last week, mm-hmm. laid that groundwork, but it that just didn't happen. Yeah, there's a lot of things that had to fall into place to get us to where we are today. A lot of dominoes have fallen. A lot, to get to this listen, point, yeah. a lot of dominoes. Yeah. So we're going to actually um, talk about some of those dominoes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now we're going to also just little caveat here to the beginning you know some of this is probably not the most exciting yeah for for some of you listeners because it is going to deal with history and philosophy and psychology yeah but we promise to make it as interesting as we possibly can and the reason this is important for us even though you may not be interested in in jean-jacques rousseau and Karl marx and frederick nietzsche what you need to remember always is like dave mentioned a moment ago consequences come from ideas yeah right any kind of ideas we have will have a consequence once right. they roll themselves out in fact that way of thinking goes all the way back to ancient greek philosophy where the greeks yes. understood that even ph- philosophical ideas have natural consequences to them when they are played out or rolled out and so what we're experiencing today in 2021 started almost 300 years ago yes with thinkers people that were thinking about uh, alternate ways of living or alternate possibilities for humanity. Yeah. And now we're feeling, we're kind of bearing the fruit of that now. Yeah. You know, the, the saying ideas have consequences. Many of us have heard that, mm-hmm. but I also recently heard like a follow up to that. Mm-hmm. And that is bad ideas have victims. Yes, exactly right. And yeah. so, you know, some consequences to ideas are quite good yeah. because they are good ideas, Yeah, but that's not exactly what we're talking about today. Mm-hmm. We're talking about, some of the ideas and thinking that led to uh, the the LGBTQ plus and transgender community and conversation being not just ingrained in the public square, mm-hmm. but celebrated and yeah. you know just really put out there dominant, and, dominant, and, dominant and very ways, dominant. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's many areas of, of our society and our culture. Yeah. And so we're going to kind of, kind of jump into that because, you know, we, we titled this episode All Hail King Self yeah. because ultimately this is about the rise and glorification of self. Mm-hmm. That's where this is all yeah. ultimately yeah. stemming from. Mm-hmm. And so we actually thought of this um, personification of <laughs> someone who was very high on themselves yeah. from our favorite yeah sitcom seinfeld absolutely and it's a character known as the whiz the whiz now for the record if you follow the show seinfeld and you observe the four primary characters all of them displayed an incredible amount of selfishness and (laughs) self-centeredness 
extreme right? yes but outside of them we see a number of other people that are kind of in their orbit so to speak and one of them is the guy known as the whiz the whiz right so this was a guy um who uh had filmed commercials for the famous uh appliance store in new york city Correct. at the time called the whiz it was an actual a chain of, of appliance stores in in the, the, the new york city area um, well, this guy had lost his job for a while, and he ends up dating Elaine, and then he yes. gets his gets his job back with the Wiz. Right? Yeah, he he was the Wiz. He was for these commercials. So exactly, you know, every 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 town, even even apparently big cities like New York, have these cheesy local, local furniture commercials. Appliance, yeah, appliance stores, yeah. appliance furniture. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and so we've all grown up with them. You know, when growing up, for me, being a little bit closer to New Orleans, you know, we watched, uh, you know, uh, The Special Man. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes, he's a special man. Mm -hmm. And, you know, these guys would come out and do a little dance. And, mm -hmm. you know, I got no credit. I got no money. We well, got to see The Special Man. Yeah. And let him have it. Yeah. Right? <laughs> let him have you know, it. Let him have it. I yeah. say, I say, I say, you know, Johnny and whoever put you in a furniture set today. Uh -huh. That was kind of their little jingle. Yeah. And uh, so even, I don't know where it was in Baton Rouge. Uh, yeah. because we didn't get the well, know, many, as so many of those commercials recently it's been know. it's been the credit clown the cre <laughs> there's a guy dressed as a clown he's the credit clown and no matter if you have good credit bad yeah. credit no credit <laughs> come see the credit clown he'll get you in a car you so know he'll buy you get your car so the credit clown and frankie and johnny yeah yeah if you're yeah. if you're from uh, the baton rouge new orleans uh -huh. corridor uh -huh. those are people you're familiar with so yeah. even in new york you got the whiz the whiz yeah yeah and so the reason why we thought about this one was not so much that this has anything to do with weird characters on the right, commercials, right, right? But it's this statement mm -hmm. that the Wiz makes. Yeah, I am the Wiz, and nobody beats me. Exactly, I am the Wiz. I am yeah. the Wiz. The Wiz was actually the store. Yeah, but he be, he personified the store. He had, and, and the thing was, he didn't have like a wizard's costume. No. He had a, a king, a, a, a crown, crown, and a cape. Yeah, and a cape. And he would march around <laughs> and, and just kind of prance around. Go, I'm yeah. the Wiz. I'm the Wiz. Right. And Elaine, attracted to this guy, thinks he's cute. Turns out she, eyes, she can't whoa. stand him because he's so self-absorbed with being the Wiz. Being the Wiz, as though he was some kind of famous person, right? Exactly. Yeah. And so yeah. that's that's where it kind of mirrors this mm -hmm. idea of. All hell king self. Right, right. It's this, you know, I am the whiz I'm and the no one. one and nobody beats me. Mm -hmm. Kind yeah. of mentality. I'm so one. here's here's uh here's a clip where the whiz tells Elaine that he's going back to his old job <laughs> as the whiz. So I told him, hit the road. I'm going back with Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Elaine, that's the second good piece of news I've gotten today. Really? What was the first? They're bringing me back. No, I'm the Wiz again. <laughs> I'm the Wiz! I'm the Wiz! Well, what about your fact-checking job? Oh, here's the fact. Uh, I'm the Wiz. <laughs> I'm the Wiz and nobody beats me. All right. Look, look just, I mean, you just look at that. Here's a fact. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm the Wiz, Wiz. right? Yeah. So even even in that, you kind of get, you know, this this uh, this this parallel thing we have today, where facts don't matter. Exactly. What do you need to know? That I'm the Wiz. I'm the Wiz. Yeah. That's what you need yeah. to know. So yeah. man, where, how in the, how did we get here? Yeah. Uh, let's let's go back and let's begin and, to trace this out. And just to, to set to set the scene here, um, we're not talking about individuals solely sort of being self-absorbed people have always been selfish right? always sure what we're talking about today is more of a a group way of thinking a social imaginary if you will we've yes. referenced that word before right where how an entire society or section of society thinks about itself yeah personally individually yes. And so individualism isn't new. Selfishness of a person isn't new. But the way that it's expressed collectively among large groups of people, um, this is what we're talking about, kind of how we got here as a society over a couple of hundred years of thinking and trying new things. Yes. So one of the things we need to just lay out there from the beginning is that God matters in our thinking. Yes. So because of you know what we do in this podcast is we kind of – peel back the layers of cultural ideas and trends and people's versions of truth. We, 
we just kind of have to, from the beginning, just state that, you know, this conversation ultimately for the Christian is moot if mm-hmm. we don't acknowledge how important God is yeah. in this process. Mm-hmm. And so what we're going to see as we kind of walk through this is what happens to the, the thinking as God becomes more and more removed from the process. Right. The, the more God is removed from the way that we think and being at the front of our conscious uh, awareness of who we are, what we're doing with our lives, the more God is pushed back and then pushed out of our minds, yeah. you begin to see the effects or the consequences Correct. of the ideas that are born out of that. Okay, so we go all the way back to the Enlightenment okay. where this started. Mm-hmm. Um, but what the Enlightenment was was a period in history in Western civilization where a lot of things were beginning to really click when it came to scientific discoveries. Mm -hmm. It was a wonderful time in that regard. A lot of good science was being done. A lot of amazing discoveries were happening. Uh, You get some of your your big names in science, philosophy, and literature coming on the scene. Mm -hmm. People were feeling enlightened Mm -hmm. because of all the things that they're beginning to learn about the world around them and themselves and the human body. You know, medical science is even starting to take some some leaps here at this point. But one of the things that is a product of the enlightenment were the philosophies that began to emerge. Because what happened is science began to play more a prominent role in our in our just day to day lives people began to start to think well maybe since science is so solid and science is so advanced now maybe we can use science to make sense of our world therefore we don't really need god right god is sort of an antiquated um thing that was necessary Mm pre-science for folks to sort of make sense of their lives right but now science has, uh, we, we have this scientific process. Mm-hmm. We have these methods. Mm-hmm. We have uh, laboratories and experiments that give us proof for certain things that we can see. So no longer do we need religion or God and gods to try to help us understand things like why lightning flashes right. or why you know the, the wind blows at certain times of the year more so than other times of the year and why the seasons take place and you know why uh, things in our bodies function the way they 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 do we can just look to science right science answers a lot of questions it answers a lot of questions right Right. and so philosophers begin to come on the scene and look at this diminished need for god from their perspective Mm -hmm. and they say well if there's no god we still need answers yeah first life's big questions because those questions don't go away. And so a number of people began to kind of work through this. And there was one particular philosopher named uh, Jean-Jacques Rousseau Mm -hmm. who really capitalized on some of the earlier ideas out of the Enlightenment and really kind of just kind of got to where people were really trying to go with this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, sometimes people get new ideas and they're afraid of the consequences. Exactly, They're afraid of... The logical conclusions. Yeah. And so they sort of pull back. Well, Rousseau was not afraid to go there. Yeah. So the, some of the great thinkers, and again, R- Rousseau didn't operate in a vacuum. He was one Correct. of many yes. who were thinking along these lines, but he was the one of the philosophers of that age that was willing to push the limits, not only in the way that he thought, but mm-hmm. what he would write and publish that Correct. caused other people to join with him in thinking these new ways yes. about humanity and about personhood and and um not scientifically so much in in how our bodies function but what makes us who we are yeah how do we become the fullest version of ourselves right so this is talking about like our our nature as human beings who are we really right so before the enlightenment the where people got their understanding of their nature as human beings was from religion yes and so in the west particularly that would be christianity Mm -hmm. so you went to the bible and you looked at what the bible had to say about people where do people come from Mm -hmm. god made people okay how did god make people well god made people in his image Mm -hmm. okay well that that tells us something it gives us some worth gives us value Mm -hmm. and so things are based on that understanding well now you're pushing religion and god to the side because you don't need it anymore you don't need it anymore so something now has to define Mm -hmm. 
our value. It has to define our worth. Well, where do you look? Rousseau said, well, of course, we naturally must look to ourself. Yes. And so now we are redefining human nature, not from a divine perspective, but from a self perspective. A human perspective, right. Yeah. Right, right. So Ru- Rousseau does what, what really what we, we all do in, in smaller ways, but once you eliminate God, Yes. And all the answers that come with a belief in God and a trust in God, well, what you're left with are people who think they're gods, which is us, humans. Right. And then we get to define who we are and what our reality is going to be for ourselves. Now, the thinking of this time was nowhere nearly advanced as it is now. No. But you see the roots, the seeds of these plants being planted during this age. Yeah, there's a lot of things with this thinking that it's like layers. Mm -hmm. It builds one on top of the other. So that's what Rousseau did. Mm -hmm. People had kind of laid down these initial layers. Mm -hmm. And Rousseau sort of saw kind of where this was going and said, well, I'm just going to start laying on. I want to lay down a few more layers. Yeah, sure. And we're going to really advance this thinking. Mm -hmm. And so he did that. And so... But the problem is when you start removing God from how you view things and how you understand reality, mm-hmm. well, every area where you from which you remove God, you have to begin to deconstruct that area. Yes. Right? Because now the thing that was propping it up, you kicked it out. Mm-hmm. And so, but it can't just collapse. Mm-hmm. I mean, philosophers aren't willing to just let it collapse. You've got to salvage it somehow. You've got to salvage yeah. it somehow. Yeah. So you've got to redefine everything. So you deconstruct um, you know, things in society mm-hmm. that had their influence through God. So how does culture, how does society function, mm-hmm. economy, power, all these things that family, family, mm-hmm. absolutely. That these things that have their being understanding in God and God's mm-hmm. design mm-hmm. now have to be reshaped. So right. you tear it down, you build it back up, but the foundation and the, building blocks you're using are all about self now yeah. rather than God and his design. Exactly. So if, if we believe as Christians that God made us to exalt him and exalt his name in how we live our lives and how we trust in him, well, once you remove God from the image, from the picture, well, who's left to be exalted? Who's left to be right. praised? Well, it's it's the next closest thing to God, which we, we can imagine, which is yes. ourselves. And so all of that begins to be worked into what the purpose of education, the purpose yeah. of business and industrialization right. the purpose of philosophy the purpose even religion itself was defined in humanistic terms right mm-hmm. it wasn't as though religion it was just erased they just had to redefine it they deconstructed it yeah. and redefined it as something made in our image rather than humans being made in the image of god and so the object of our worship shifted from god to self yeah. And once that happened, everything that followed was built upon that idea that the human yeah. person is the most important being. And so all of our thinking, all of our actions begin to flow from that idea, and that's where we begin to see the snowball begin to yeah. build. And for the record, I, John, Jean-Jacques Rousseau was, was writing somewhere in the early 1800s, I, I'm, somewhere around that time, 1830s. Early, yeah. 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 Um, and so a lot of his thinking was affecting Western Europe and the United States at that time. Very much so. Um, which, which this godless framework, deconstructing life and building yeah. it back up in our image, leads to some other thinkers later in the 1800s who have an enormous impact on yeah, society. Yeah, very big impact. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Again, like you said, snowball. Yeah. That's a great way to explain it because as much as as much work as Rousseau did to really kind of define this, mm-hmm. other thinkers are going to just keep pushing that yep. snowball downhill yep. more and more and more because once you get into this, you just kind of keep going deeper and deeper and deeper. Absolutely. It's a bit of a rabbit hole. Mm-hmm. Because, like you said, you kick out a foundation, you've got to salvage it. Mm-hmm. And if you've ever tried to salvage something and you did not have the right stuff to salvage it with, mm-hmm. the more you fix, the more you realize what's broken. Yeah. And so the more you start trying to duct tape and bubble gum. Because you're still operating from a right. humanistic perspective. Yeah, you're, right. you're trying to right. MacGyver this thing together. Exactly. And so it, it, it kind of comes out as like a Frankenstein's monster mm-hmm. yeah. at, at some point. Yeah. Because... It's, it's not being put back together the proper way. It was mm-hmm. whole before mm-hmm. you tore it down, yep. and now you're trying to put it back together. Mm-hmm. And so people start to come in along later and go, well, we can, we can just really put this thing to bed 
if we take certain steps in our thinking. Mm -hmm. And the big thing we need to do is we need to to stop flirting with the idea that God is at all necessary at any level. Right. So thinkers like Rousseau and some of the ones that came shortly after him were willing to kind of let God coexist. Mm -hmm. He wasn't useful. Right. But, you know, people get something out of that. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if you want to fold God into this version of yourself, you can. Well, Mm -hmm. we see that uh, with the rise of deism. Yep. Okay. Which was not invented by Rousseau. No, not at all. He came before Rousseau. He's he's piggybacking on this. Mm -hmm. And so you had this idea where I can have a version of God that's very detached from reality in my life. Mm -hmm. I can believe in him, but ultimately I'm I'm driving the bus here. Yeah. This is sort of my life, my choices. Mm-hmm. I'm in charge. Yeah. So people later like Nietzsche, Frederick Nietzsche and Karl Marx, they come along and they're like, you don't need to be flirting with this idea of God at all. Right. You need to put God to death. He's going to get in the way. God, yeah, he's absolutely in the way. Mm-hmm. You need to remove him. Now we can really get down and we can really discover our true authentic mm-hmm. selves. Yeah. If there's no God to deal with whatsoever. Yeah. So the thought is all the way back to the garden that God is actually hindering us. He's holding back from us yeah. the fullest realization of who we can be. So if you can cast God off, cast God aside and put him to death, literally kill God is what Nietzsche would have said yeah. completely. Well, now you were set forth on a path to be the fullest, best, most fulfilled version of yourself and these thinkers in the 1800s began to believe and really believed that this was the best way to advance society forward was to emphasize the the wholeness and fulfillment of the self over the society itself yeah Yeah, because you you needed the self to be the primary engine here Mm -hmm. if there was if there was any type of god or religion then you always have some sort of standard or authority outside of self yep that can be appealed to. It's appealed to, exactly. Right? And so you have to do something with it. And what people begin to realize was that you just couldn't sit God in a corner mm-hmm. and say, you sit here, be quiet. So long as you behave yourself, you can yeah. be in the room. Yeah, well, they realize we'll talk to you that, when we need you. Yeah, yeah they realize yeah. that is not going to work. No. As long as he's in the room, he's the 800-pound gorilla in the room. Yeah, exactly. And so it's better for not just to him to leave the room, but just to die altogether mm-hmm. so that that obstacle to fulfillment mm-hmm. and happiness is no longer there. Exactly, yeah. And so the supreme authority becomes the person, the human. Yes. And this is where Nietzsche and later Marx begin to build their their ideals from, yeah. Yeah, and so we're not going to get all into um, you know Nietzsche and Marx. Uh, there's a lot of talk, particularly about Marx these days, yeah. uh, as you see... You know, uh, you know, arise in in certain groups that you know have kind of a communist socialist bent. Mm-hmm. Uh, but what people need to understand is that if you're going to lay all that at Marx, mm-hmm. you're you're missing the point. Yeah, this this is a really bad gumbo. It's really okay? bad. Yeah. Uh, so it's not just the thinking of Marx that's yeah. involved in some of that. There's a lot of other think- thinkers that come out of this this school of thought, mm-hmm. this vein that glorify self. That have added various components to mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's it is it's a really bad gumbo it of is. nasty ingredients that sort of go into that. Yeah, and, and by, by the time Marx is writing, for instance, his Communist Manifesto, yeah, the Enlightenment's been happening for almost two hundred years. Like right. it's been going for a long time. He yeah. is a child of the Enlightenment, very much so. And so this, I mean, th- th- you think about the the idealism of of Marx or the, or the ideas of Marx that have such good consequences. This was happening while our own country was being formed and then growing into a nation yeah. right through the late 17, early 1800s into the mid 1800s. I mean, and so there are things happening in the world, historical events that are happening in the world that are significant, but Mark is conceiving and perceiving of a different kind of society where people have cast God off completely yeah. and are now living by their own sort of ideas of, of humanity centered right. around the person finding the fullness a meaning for themselves apart from God. Yeah, and so part of, and this is really, Nietzsche was definitely into this as well, but yeah. Marx for sure was such a big emphasis on this idea of power. Yes. And so what Marx saw, and, here, and Marx was right to point this out, there was a lot of oppression yeah. 
that was going on around him. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we see it all over the world throughout history. You know, people that abuse their positions, mm -hmm. their power, mm -hmm. and they oppress others. Okay. That's not new. And not, it's not much. It's not. It's not, it's not deniable either. It's not. Like, it's not it's, deniable. The story tells that story. Yeah. Yeah. Right, absolutely. Right. And so, you know, he's not wrong to see some of these problems. Mm -hmm. But what where he goes, um, where he goes askew, is in taking these ideas about self as being positive, God and religion as being negative, mm -hmm. and he applies those to the oppression that he sees. Exactly. Well, why are these people in power? Well, they're in power because they are trying to uphold certain cultural norms mm -hmm. and taboos as being the moral standard for society to operate on. Yep. And they're enforcing that. I said, enforcing it there, but they're actually forcing it mm -hmm. onto people. And where are they getting those ideas? Where are they getting that standard? Well, they're getting it from religion. Yeah. So religion is the ultimate evil yeah. that gives people in power the sort of the the weapons mm -hmm. to oppress others exactly and so that's mark's thinking mm -hmm. is that once you get rid of religion then you render the people who are in power who are oppressing you render them basically powerless powerless yeah because exactly. now they don't have these standards mm -hmm. which they can impose yep. on the masses the authority they appeal to is gone it's gone. Right. So now they have right. no authority because they have no authority to appeal to. That's greater exactly. than themselves. And yeah. so if, if the self is the ultimate expression of humanity, then the person that's working in the factory mm -hmm. has just as much right to pursue, pursue their happiness as the aristocrat yep. who is dining in their mansion. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of how Marx sees it yeah. because it has nothing to do with your position in society, it all has to do with the self. Yeah. And so everything that stands in the way of the self needs to be removed. And so anything that is in the way, that's oppression. Yep. That is people in power using that power to keep the true authentic person down. Yeah. So whatever you want to do, if there's anything in the way, it's got to go. Exactly. And so Mark really puts this out there but the problem with these ideas is, and believe it or not, there there were there was pushback. Mm. As popular as these ideas Absolutely. were today, there was pushback back then because number one, you needed to make sense of these beyond just a philosophy. Yeah, and that's where science came in. Then the Enlightenment was all about scientific discovery and the reliability of science and science. Can, can is and, and can be a wonderful tool yep. this is not a no doubt this is not a talk against science and so one of the things that these ideas needed they needed scientific backing mm -hmm. right yep what proof do you have scientifically to assert that the self can be the highest fulfillment yep. of humanity which is an appeal to authority which is an appeal right. to authority. Yeah. Yes. You, you erase God, but you put in his place scientific discovery, scientific yeah. categorizations. So you are appealing right. to an authority, just a different authority now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. People don't need it. People don't need authority. We are our own rulers. Right. However, it would be great <laughs> if the authority of science could back this up for exactly. us. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And so enter Charles Darwin. Ooh. Darwin. Uh, Darwin comes along with his theory of evolution. Mm -hmm. And this was exactly what these philosophies needed. They need they were godless ways yep. of viewing the world that needed a godless system of science to back them up. Yep. And that's what Charles Darwin offered. Mm -hmm. And so these weren't good theories when they came out, but they fit the narrative of the day. Exactly. And they were picked up by those who wanted to champion this narrative. Mm -hmm. And Darwin got a lot of free press, mm -hmm. so to speak, because of that. And so, you know, Darwin's science, I said in the notes, you know, it's bad science meaning bad thinking. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Nobody was latching onto this from the philosophical standpoint because Darwin was so good in his science. Mm -hmm. Darwin, as we have proven over and over again, was awful in his science. Yep. Macroevolution doesn't stand up to anything. No. Um, you know, Darwin was looking at species 
understanding nothing about the inner workings of the of the cell. Mm -hmm. He thought it was all a bunch of chemical reactions. Yep. Why? Well, there's no microscopes. Right. Well, there's no way to test this. There's stuff. no way to yeah. test yeah. it. Well, later on, people have microscopes. Yeah. They could go in there, and they look at this well-designed factory mm -hmm. that exists in the human cell and go, good grief. Wait a minute. Good grief, Darwin. This isn't a bunch of chemicals just banging around in mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. This looks like somebody designed an intricate factory and delivery system mm -hmm. For sale, growth, and multiplication. Designed. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Right. But, again, we've eliminated the designer at this point in right. history. And so you can only appeal to what you can prove scientifically. Yeah. And so the philosophers and the scientists, though not necessarily were working together. They weren't like they were in cahoots to, no, to corrupt is, society. They're doing their own thing. This is not some deep state, a deep state conspiracy. Right. But science is authoritative only in that it can provide Ob objective data what you do with that information yes can be can incredibly subjective right right so you can take whatever you find scientifically and use it however you want to gain your power to gain what an influence to have an agenda f kind of rolled out the way yeah, you everybody to. sees from through through their lens of bias yeah and so that's why you can have good scientific research done yeah. that gives you data one person looks at that data and says, I interpret it this way. Mm -hmm. Why? Because of my bias. And another person interprets it the complete opposite mm -hmm. way. Why? Because of their bias. Exactly. Yep. And so it's the same factual information. It's just interpreted in different light. And mm -hmm. so Darwin interpreted what he saw yeah. from a God, very godless perspective. Mm -hmm. And again, it was this perfect marriage of philosophy and science yeah. at that point. Yeah. And so people that weren't necessarily inclined to just sit there and think deep thoughts mm -hmm. on the high-minded ideas of the day mm -hmm. were convinced. Why? Because now science has entered the picture. Exactly. So and it's erased potential doubts yeah, that so may have been. For all of human history, human history, when people ask, where did I come from? How did I get here? The answer was, well, God made us. Yeah. Well, now all of a sudden, people are asking that question. Darwin was like, well, it was a process of cellular transformations over many millennia uh, and we've evolved from primal species to what we are now and so the philosophers who are not scientists come along and go aha yes we told you god it does necessary now we're telling you he doesn't even exist we don't need right. him at all don't need him. and so it sort of it sort of su supported their their philosophies very much so so now philosophy and science are melding together yep. To form a way of viewing the world, a worldview, correct, eliminates God and exalts the person as the primary uh, being on earth to do whatever they want, however they feel. Yeah, and because you no longer need God from a philosophical or scientific perspective, well, now you can do with self whatever, whatever you, you, <laughs> whatever you whatever want. you want exactly because I mean, you've just you've taken the bumpers down mm -hmm. and you know off the lanes, yeah, and now it's kind of free to roam wherever. It, those ideas will will take even you. in the gutters if they <laughs> take the bumpers off even in the gutters even in the gutters <laughs> and so this opens up the door for uh, especially men like Sigmund Freud yeah from from the psychology mm -hmm. perspective of things to come along and begin to redefine self in new ways mm -hmm. and yes. you know again a lot can be said about Freud but his his whole contribution was the sexualization of self. Yes. Human beings are sexual beings mm -hmm. at their core. Yeah. If you take Freud's studies, and I'm not, again, I'm not an expert, but from what I've read and, and learned, he covered a lot of fields, but the primary emphasis yeah. of his work was on the sexualization of the human person and that um, the fullest expression of our humanity. Uh, well, the fullest fulfillment, I guess, of our humanity is to be fully sexually fulfilled or satisfied. Yes. And that should be the primary goal of life is to satisfy that craving in our lives. And so once you do that, you can be the best version of your self. Right. Since you're starting with a clean slate, you can make yourself to be whatever you want. If sex and sexual desire is the most primal urge of a human being, well, then having that fulfilled it should be your primary goal in life or purpose in life. And so that's where we begin to see steps being taken where you're now you're melding not just philosophy and science and psychology, but the idea of sex and the self yeah. together as primary. Yeah, before Freud, I mean, sex was just an activity. Yeah. Like, nobody mm -hmm. thought about it as a means to identify yourself. Exactly. 
And what Freud did was he just turned that upside down mm -hmm. and suddenly redefined how you define a person. Yeah. And now it is all about you being a sexual being. Mm -hmm. And so if you're a sexual being, again, like you said, that that ultimate purpose in your life is that sexual fulfillment. Mm -hmm. And if that's the case, well, when do you as a person go about pursuing that? Yes. Now, before, when we were, we were just pursuing, when the Enlightenment was telling us to just pursue happiness, mm -hmm. well, you can pursue happiness whenever. Yeah. You can be a five-year-old kid. And you can pursue happiness. Because it wasn't sexualized at that point. Right. Because right, you, you right. can, if, if playing in the mud makes you happy, we'll go play in the mud. Mm -hmm. Right? You can do that. Yeah. The problem with being a sexual being is that sex doesn't come into the picture until you are sexually mature. Mm -hmm. So even if you take God out of the equation, which has happened at this point, yep. you look at it strictly from a, a, a secular perspective, Sex is not a thing for anyone to do outside uh, or before they at least reach puberty. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Absolutely. So, and that was common among all civilization for all time. Yeah. Right? Like this was pretty common. Cultures had an understanding. Yeah. It was a process a person went through. Right. To become kind of sexually capable. Right, yeah. and Freud starts to undermine that in his psychology. Exactly, because if the ultimate goal for you to is to have sexual fulfillment, mm -hmm. well, then you must be able to begin working to attain that goal from day one. Yes. Otherwise, it's a crummy goal. Yeah. You have to wait. Mm -hmm. You have to wait until you become, you know, sexually mature mm -hmm. enough to go after that. Yep. So this has huge implications on children. Because now what you're, you're opening the door for is this notion that children need to find full sexual fulfillment. Yes, and whatever's wrong with the children, it's because of some sexual disorientation, some sexual unfulfilled desire. Right. Something didn't happen in their sexual, well, sexual being. Um, our sexual understanding that's made them an incomplete person today. Yeah. So we have to uncover that so that they can get down the path to be their fullest version of themselves. Exactly. Right, right. And so when you, you take all this together, mm -hmm. you, you take this turn away from God yep. towards self, mm -hmm. you elevate that, you remove God from the, the, from the whole process, mm -hmm. redefine meaning, redefine value, redefine purpose, you bring in uh, a scientific argument to kind of help give you another side mm -hmm. to that of, uh, view, and then you sexualize the person, mm -hmm. and it begins to make a lot more sense why we are where we are now yeah. with this whole conversation. Exactly. This is how so many in our world today are actually thinking. They've taken a, a much more evolved, a sort of developed way of thinking, yes. taking the philosophy, the science, um, and the psychology, and put them together in, like you said, a bad gumbo. Yeah. And this is, is, this is what's influencing uh, so many people today who knew nothing of Freud, of Marx right. and Nietzsche, or of Rousseau. They know nothing of these people. They've just adopted this way of thinking because it serves the self. It's what fuels desire in their life. And yeah. we, we all understand that we like to have what we want. But a large part of the Christian life is seeking God's will. All of Christian life is seeking God's will. And Jesus says denying self is one way that we do this. The primary way that we do this yeah. is the denial of yeah, self. Way, way to go, Jesus. Yeah. And so what <laughs> way, you way to yeah. way to be completely countercultural. Exactly. And yeah. so what you have are these two obviously different and and divergent worldviews yeah. where one says it's all about self and then the lord comes and says deny self and right. so you see where the where the where the fracture is in society yeah. in worldview and understanding but you also can understand why so many people are drawn to this this way of thinking because it serves you it gives you what you want fulfillment desires pleasure account uh, not accountability uh, affirmation a partnership, a community to be part of, like all that is yes. fueled by this way of thinking. It is. So when you were a kid, 
and I know you did. <laughs> I don't even have to ask, but I will for, for our listeners' sake. Yeah. When you came in from school, did you watch He-Man? Yes. Absolutely. Of course Joe. you did. Yeah. I've, yeah. So yeah. if you're if you're our age yeah. and you grew up, you know, watching these shows in the early eighties, mm -hmm. He Man was one of them, especially if you were a dude. Yeah. Right? That was the yeah. And so He Man He big, wrote a Green Tiger, man. What are you talking about? Yeah. Yeah. He had his his, his tagline was mm -hmm. I have the power. power. Yeah. And you know, for a little boy that's very appealing. Absolutely. And they sold a ton of figures. Mostly to me. I had, I had a black. Yeah, I had yeah. All of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mostly yeah. to Orn. Yeah. Because boys love this idea of being in charge mm -hmm. and having the power. And it was this big muscle dude mm -hmm. and his sword and his green and, you know, gold striped tiger yeah, yeah. beating up on the bad guys. Yeah. And it was such a, it was such a, you know, this is fantasy fulfillment, mm -hmm. you know, to kind of, you know, pretend and live like, like you're like your he man, and, where and, and you, he where you have the power. He yeah. couldn't lose. He, he didn't lose. He always defeated Skeletor right? and the evil. Yeah, yeah, yeah he always won. Yeah, because when you're a kid, you're told when to get up, what mm -hmm. to do, mm -hmm. when to eat, when to go to bed, mm -hmm. and he man comes along and he's like, I have the power, and that's yeah. what little boys wanted. Yeah, yeah, and it was appealing. Yeah, it's kind of the same Absolutely. concept with Absolutely. this this glorification of self. Mm -hmm. People don't want to be told by anything outside of them, mm -hmm. this is the way you were made. This is the design and plan for your life. This is the purpose that you mm -hmm. were created for. No, I have the power. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's the idea. And this mm -hmm. idea that you can grab hold of that yourself mm -hmm. and you can metaphorically ride your battle camp through yeah. life. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, swinging your sword, doing whatever you want to mm -hmm. is very appealing. Absolutely, we should not we should not scoff at that idea. Not as if oh, these people these days, or what do they know? Well, they know they want to be in charge. Yeah, that's what they know. Yeah, and they have good reason for wanting that. And everybody feels that draw on yeah. their heart to want to be in full, complete control of your life, mm -hmm. calling every shot, and everybody else answers to you. In fact, yes, yeah. and in fact, if you are in Christ before you were in Christ. That's exactly how we lived. Yeah, exactly, yeah. It is exactly yeah. how we lived. That's exactly right. And Jesus saved you from that. Yeah. So Jesus had to bleed and die to save you from that way of yeah. thinking. And yet the world, no, listen, the world has always thought in these terms. The oh, current yes. the current shift in cultural understanding regarding sexuality is only the latest expression right. of this corrupt way of thinking. Rousseau didn't invent this. No. Right? This was invented by Satan, right? Like this is this is all the way back to the garden in Genesis chapter three. Absolutely. And and so this is not a new development. We just see different expressions of it today. And because some of these trends that we're seeing in our culture are alarming, yeah, and, and some damage is being done to people's lives because right. of it we get concerned and we go how did we get to this point well we've seen a little bit today how these dominoes have been falling in place yes for this way of thinking to be embraced not by a few people but by masses of people because it's yeah. so appealing like it a is. drug you keep going back to it because it gives you what you want and the nature of the christian life is war making war against that self in order to have the life of Christ alive in you, which always brings more joy and lasting peace in your life. The problem is we just don't want to go back to those old those yeah. old ways of, of, of doing it our way. Yeah, and the Christian life, the gospel, the, 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 the whole core of Christianity mm -hmm. is so antithetical to this way of thinking. Yeah. There's a reason why these man-made realities and worldviews that, that we as humanity ourselves try to develop Mm -hmm. They all have one common enemy, yeah, and that's the God of the Bible. Exactly. No, nobody is protesting or throwing shade at Buddha right now. Nope. Nobody is going after the teachings of you know various mystics mm -hmm. and other religious figures. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody's people are just scared to go after Allah. Yeah, that's you true. know, yeah. even though Allah would have. In the, in the Muslim tradition would have something to say very strongly against all of this. Yeah. But it is the Christian God. It's yeah. the God of the Bible that stands as public enemy number one. Primary opponent, yeah. yeah. Why? Because of this very thing. Not, not that there is 
just the claim that God makes to be the creator, designer, and purpose giver for all human life, but the fact that God also made a way through Christ through which we can be saved from this nonsense. Yeah. So it's not just an appeal to a different view of things. It's also the fact that Christianity says you need to be saved out of this. Yes, exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah. So it's not like two choices of breakfast cereal. Yeah. Do you want Apple Jacks or Fruit Loops? Right. Well, take either one, right? Whichever one you prefer is fine. Mm -hmm. Now, this is like, here's something that is fundamentally bad for you. Mm -hmm. You need to be rescued from. Mm -hmm. It is It is damning to your very soul. Yep. That's what Christianity is saying. And Christ alone can save you from it. Yeah. These, these views, they don't want to have that themselves painted that way. Exactly. They want to be the good God. They want to be an acceptable right path for everyone. Mm -hmm. who, who, why, do, why do you need to be saved mm -hmm. from yourself yeah. when yourself is so amazing and wonderful? Mm -hmm. Why? Yeah. And so that's why you get so much pushback against Christianity and not other world religions. Yeah is because no other religion is saying you need to be saved from this. Yeah, it challenges every aspect yeah. of it because because it becomes absolute. Our, our sort of self-made, self-preserving -pre worldview becomes our absolute authority. And so, right. so everything in our life is dictated by our desire to advance self, whereas the faith in Christ is constantly laying self down as hard as that may be at times yeah. in order to exalt Jesus. The, the 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 good news is that the spirit of God that comes to dwell with the believer empowers us to do that. We yes. don't have to make up this life for ourselves. God is is showing us how we should live our lives. It's really good news because it doesn't ride or reside on your ability yeah. it, or, or your, your imagination. God is the one who's doing the work in you. God is the one who's setting the path for you. And so there's actual freedom there, but there's this idea, we talked to, to touch on this a little bit last week, there's this idea that breaking free of, uh, of traditional sexual norms or breaking free of orthodox belief or breaking free of biblical teachings is somehow going to liberate us to be who we really are. Yeah. And what that essentially uncovers is just a lot of ugliness that's been buried deep inside of us all along. Right. Yeah, it's like you're. It's basically it's a Pandora box exactly, kind of thing. Exactly right. You know, it's a Pandora box that someone has whitewashed with, you know, this label freedom. Yeah. Anything and that I've got to open that because mm -hmm. I want to be free. Yeah. And once you do, all the ugliness and the nastiness mm -hmm. that resides in the human heart yeah. begins to come out. You yeah. unchain that. Yeah. And then look, this this idea extends well beyond sexual. Yes. Se sexuality. Yeah. Money, family. Power, right. politics, government, education, yeah. everything is affected by Very much this so. way of thinking. The reason we're bringing it up now in this context of sexuality in our culture today is because that is the driving force behind so much of the movement we see yeah. currently. Whereas at a time when there were uh, there were there were alternate sexual lifestyles in our culture, yeah. they were they were kind of un, um, kind of hidden. They were. They weren't exactly exposed to the world. They were done in private. There yeah. wasn't a big deal made about them. Well, now that's shifted. And now they're in the, very much in the public, and they're in front of us through media and social media and things like that. And now we are all expected to affirm and approve of yeah. all of these different choices and lifestyles. And we keep asking ourselves, again, how did we get to the point where this is the self seems to be so important? Yeah. Well, now you know it was this adoption of these ways of thinking that fueled our desires and our hearts. Yeah. And so these, these ideas have had these consequences and now looking at them, they're not pretty. And so what do we do? Like, what is, what is our answer yeah. for the world when they ask, okay, so you guys are sitting here in your podcast studio judging the world because they're all wrong and you think you're right. Like this is the attitude we have. You sure. bunch of, you a bunch of this, that, and the others, right? So someone asked honestly, okay, if you if what you're saying is right, what do we do now going forward as Christians? What are our answers for, for the world? Yeah, I think for our answers, number one is live your life according to God's law and design. Yeah. yeah. Like that that's that's should be foundational. Absolutely. 
Um, because if we're not doing that, the answers we give are inconsistent. Exactly. Our life has to match the answers that we give. And so number one, understand what God has said in his word, Mm -hmm. uh, how he has designed this life to function. Yeah. And live according to that Mm -hmm. and go deep on that. Make sure you're in good Bible study. Make sure you're in a good Bible teaching church. Make sure you're in a church that helps you discover how you live that out, but also how you serve in light of that. Um, That's, that's first and foremost. Absolutely. And then from there, as we develop relationships with people who have these, these ideas that they've bought into Mm -hmm. about this, about self, Mm -hmm. you know, we had to be prepared as, as Paul says, to give an answer for the hope that we have the hope. Yeah. That's the key. That's the key word. You know, Paul didn't say be prepared to give a defense for heterosexuality. Right. He doesn't say be prepared to give a defense for only two biological genders. Yes. He says, be prepared to give a hope, mm-hmm. uh, you know, for the hope that you have. Mm-hmm. What is that hope? It's our salvation yeah. in Christ. Amen. And so we need first and foremost to be able to articulate what Jesus has done for us and how it gives us hope. Amen. There, there will be plenty of opportunity to get into the details mm-hmm. of why some of the thinking mm-hmm. about sexual identity is not helpful or healthy. Yeah. But if we can't live out the gospel, if we can't articulate the hope that we have, mm-hmm. well, now we're, now we're just getting into a debate. Exactly. That's all we're doing. Yeah. It's yeah. tit for tat. Yeah. And guess what? You may get out debated. Very much so, yeah. You know what? Yeah. Because look, there's plenty of people out there that are more crafty with an argument than I am. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter how wrong they are. Yep. They may win the debate. Yeah. But they cannot argue against my life. Mm-hmm. They cannot argue against the hope that I have. Yeah. And so that's what we got to put out first and foremost. Amen. I totally agree. Yeah. The 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 goal of the Christian life is not just to avoid sin, but to exalt Christ as our living hope and one of the ways that we yeah. do this is to what well, we do have to guard ourselves against being deceived you know paul says in in, in colossians 2 that to see to it that no one takes you captive mm-hmm. by philosophy and empty deceit according to the human tradition according to the elemental spirits right and so there are human traditions that are very attractive to us but to go back right. to where you just started with this if we're committed to christ if we're committed to his church and his word we're in that regularly those guardrails are going to keep be built into our lives yeah and we're going to be able to notice and see some of these plausible arguments that people are making that sound attractive that sound correct very much so but once exam examined against the word of god we realize that they're not and in the end what we'll have is god proving to us once again that his way is always better so guard yourself against some of these plausible arguments not from your own heart or mind but from that of the word of god All right, thanks everyone for hanging with us for this episode. We're going to continue our conversation in next week's episode because yep. we're not done talking about this. No, we're not. Uh, we're kind of scratching the surface, and so we're going to get into yeah. it some more. Yeah. And as always, uh, your questions are welcome. Let me tell you real quick how you can ask those questions. Mm-hmm. So you can go to our Facebook page, yep. but, uh, facebook.com backslash footnotable podcast. And if you just want to throw it in the comments, that's fine. If you want to direct message us, you can do that as well. If you want to shoot us an email, you can do that at footnotable at fbcbr.com. And we will get those. And uh, we we always appreciate people's questions, interactions. Always. Always. And we'll do our best to provide uh, good answers. Yeah. And um, and you know what? If you throw us a curveball, we will – we will do our best to do the research, mm-hmm. uh, to, to just give you something that is going to be helpful. Yeah, we're not going to just make it up off the top of our no, heads. No, not at all. We're, we're going to do our homework. And look, I, I understand, and they, they, Dave and I both know that these matters are very 
sensitive to a lot of people of course and 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 rightfully so in many cases uh, we can talk about a lot of things out there in the world and find a lot of common ground with people that we may not have common ground with otherwise um, but we understand that this particular issue is difficult to discuss. Yeah. And so we don't want to be insensitive or callous toward it at all. We want to be compassionate and gracious. Yes. So if you ask us questions, even hard questions, we're going to do our best to answer them as truthfully as we know how. Because that's, that, right. that's all we know how to do. Um, we're not going to make things up or, or just simply give you platitudes so that you're not mad at us. We're going right. to give you the truth as best as we know it. And we'll, hopefully we can open up some great conversations along the way. Yeah, absolutely. So send those questions in. And don't forget, you can follow us on on Instagram at Footnotable, and uh, you can watch us on YouTube mm -hmm. when we post mm -hmm. those videos after the episodes air live. Just uh, search Footnotable on yeah. YouTube, and there we are. Boom. Come on. First one. Get it. All right. So thanks so much for joining us for this uh, Thank episode. You. We Thank will you. talk Thank to you guys next time. Next week. Since your mom's watching, why don't you water that plant so she can take it? <laughs> it looks bad. <laughs> I got some water right here, Mama. Look here. Mama. He's doing it now, Mama Claire. I'm going to get it. All right. Fresh don't make a mess. Oh, look at there. Mm. She said maybe putting a plant without a window was a bad idea. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, it's like what is it, an aloe plant. It should be all right. I think. We'll see. I gave it a good little water. We'll see if it comes yeah. back. It may need to go by the window. Well, it's kind of so, droopy. Kind of well, <laughs> something sitting up hell long without any water. Uh, oh, poor plant. Yeah, that's all right. It'll, it'll be all, all right. right. We'll see how it goes. We'll see what happens. All right. See you. Hey, look, your mama's giving some 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 love to us. All right. Go take Good care on. of that plant. Thank you. All right. See you guys uh, right. online next time.